Kim Sweets. My name is Dr. Courtney Tracy. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a doctor of clinical psychology in the state of California. And I'm also a human being that has been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, ADHD, and autism. Life growing up for me, um, when I get asked that question, it's usually along the lines of what made you become a therapist. And I feel like I grew up within mental health disorders, within mental illness within substance use. I grew up in a multi-generational, multicultural family with both my grandparents, my mom, myself, my half-brother, and my uncle who has really severe autism. It was very difficult growing up. The way I label it simply is I grew up with a single mother on welfare and struggled, which led ultimately to my initial struggles that I didn't resolve for a really long time. My struggles probably started when I was 13. I remember finding substances at 13 and enjoying the numbness. I remember not knowing how to put words to how loud my inner and outer world felt. And I also didn't know how to put words to how quiet and comfortable I felt under the influence. There was something going on and I was too young to know at the time what it was. I started to show a lot of signs of pretty intense mental illness between the ages of 13 through graduating high school. I ended up going to rehab at 15 for methamphetamine, psychedelics, and cocaine, and I started selling my body for substances. I went down a path of feeling like the only thing out there was the chaos that I had known. And it was only one psychology class that I ended up taking in high school that showed me that there were people looking for answers to the questions that I didn't even know I was asking at the time. It felt really isolative growing up. I, you know, my mother had a tendency to share her inner world with me when I was really young, including her low self-esteem, her tumultuous relationships, um, her anxiety and her depression. And so I thought that our household was the only household that was dealing with what I was dealing with. And I gained a lot of comparison from my mother as well. So I grew up in affluent Orange County, California, and it may not look like it today, whether from my appearance or my career, but I felt like the only one that was growing up in poverty with the blonde moms, with the BMWs and all the families, with the perfect family portraits getting sent to all the houses. And I was growing up in an insect infested family conflict household. I was so angry. I was, you know, looking back, I think I was sad, but it came out as anger and it came out as a desire to self-harm and a desire to be impulsive. I met my now husband at 15, and we are still together after 19 years. However, in the beginning of our relationship, um, through the development of my borderline, I became very, very impulsive and very chaotic and you know, examples of things I would do would be smashing my hand into mirrors so that my hands would bleed, so I could send photos, so he would come and hang out with me. It was such clear signs of borderline, of this push and pull, I need you, now I hate you. And it was so indicative of my internal experience and my childhood environment. And it felt like as much as I was constantly spinning inside, I made my world spin even more on the outside. I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder at 22 years old. I feel as though I experienced the symptoms for at least seven to eight years pretty intensely. And it wasn't until my husband gave me an ultimatum after I had not come home one night in college, thought that I had only drank alcohol, felt suicidal, went to the emergency room, they drug tested me. I had eight different substances in my body that I didn't know I had taken. I was pretty sure I was roofied and was dying physically. 
I admitted myself, spent six days in a psychiatric inpatient and detoxification unit, and was diagnosed with something I always knew I had, but didn't have a label for. Interestingly, I didn't know about the stigma of borderline personality disorder when I was diagnosed with it. What I did feel when I was diagnosed with it, however, was that it wasn't what was really going on. You know, borderline personality disorder is an external behavioral diagnosis. You get the diagnosis because of how you treat yourself and other people, but it doesn't necessarily explain what's going on internally. So it explained my behaviors, it explained my relationships, but it didn't explain how I sensed the world and how I related to the world on a fundamental level. So it's been 10 years since that diagnosis, and I've learned a lot more about myself along the way. Describing my childhood and my early adulthood, you would think that my darkest moment would be during those years. But when you have mental illness and you struggle with mental health issues, they can come and go. I think two of my darkest moments were after I was a mom. And that relates a lot to my autism diagnosis because there was no escaping sensation and sound and the need to communicate with someone. So I would say my first darkest moment was actually during a family tragedy that happened in the beginning of 2019. My husband was publicly arrested when we owned a mental health treatment center because he had a PTSD episode um, and I spiraled for the first nine months of my first baby's life. I used substances, I escaped to Vegas, and I started developing a life that was similar to the one that I was raised in. It was devastating. It was hard to accept that the systems that were born within me through my upbringing could become so strong at a time when I wanted nothing more than the opposite to take place. And I would say that the second darkest time in my life was just six months ago. And that's when I was diagnosed with autism, deep in a meltdown, deep in a shutdown, deep in a burnout. And I had just become pregnant with my second child. And I felt like my world was falling apart. I have lived with passive suicidal ideation for over 15 years. And the one time it became active was this year in 2023, when I was pregnant, when I had a four-year-old, when my career was skyrocketing. And I think people don't understand that if something's going on with you internally, it doesn't really matter what's going on externally, what people say or what you experience. If the feeling is there, it can become powerful. I've treated a lot of people who have been suicidal, and I know the signs to look for as a mental health professional. And when you're in it, it's very hard to see a way out. I took the steps that I had never taken before. Before I turned my phone off, I had changed my background screen so that it wasn't a photo of my husband and my child. You know, I was taking steps so that I wouldn't not do it and pictured myself following through with it. It was very scary. And there was something in me that felt like, you know, being autistic, you don't, you have a hard time reaching out to people in general. Uh, I have a best friend that I've had for 18 years. We only text. We do not hang out in person. Uh, we do not talk on phone calls or FaceTimes, and I FaceTimed her. And she answered. And I was panicking and crying and hyperventilating in my car. She talked to me for an hour and reminded me of everything I had accomplished in the last two decades. And she saved me. And I guess maybe a better way to put it is I let her. Yeah. 
I changed my mind because I realized that I didn't need to hurt myself just because I was hurting. It was important for me to not cause pain to my children because I know what that's like. It can be so hard to get out of the mess, but it's really beautiful when you can look back at that mess and realize that you weren't it. It was just around you at the time and it became so overwhelming. You know, when you're in the depths of it, it can feel like you aren't allowed to stop, that you're taking steps forward and that's the trajectory that you're on. It's like there's a momentum to relieve you of your pain, but you're headed in the wrong direction. You don't know that you are. Just pause. It's okay to do that. Your body doesn't want to tell you that in the moment. Your mind doesn't want to tell you that in the moment. It wants relief in the immediate. The thing is, all we're trying to do is escape the immediate. And so actually pausing it affords you the opportunity to feel maybe something more than what you think you're feeling. Sometimes that feeling can be hope. Sometimes that feeling is just a willingness to reach out to one person. And that's what I did. Choosing to reach out saved my life. If I could look someone in the eyes right now that has dealt with anything that I've discussed, I would say what I tend to say to my clients and my audience, and it's that you're a human being. You're allowed to feel, and it's not okay what happened, and it's not okay what's happening, and there's something that we can do about it, and it's not too late, even if it feels like it is, and that you will look back one day and be so happy that you're still here. And I know I am. I feel that right now. I'm six months pregnant, and every kick I feel of my baby makes me so happy that I'm here.